as Yahya Dolo's administration marks his last year in office today, we discuss the achievements and preparations for the forthcoming elections. And Kiari steps in as the All Progressive Congress confirms Adamu's resignation. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anna Cole. On November 11, 2023, the Kogi State governorship election will take place. Now, the incumbent governor of the state, Yahya Bello, is not contesting as he is serving his final second tenure in office. With the primaries held between March 27 and April 17 of 2023, the final list of candidates published on June 9, 2023, the campaign launched by political parties commenced on 14th of June, 2023. Now it is scheduled to end at midnight on November 9, 2023. Ahead of the November elections, the recurring decimal of violence has reared its head, raising apprehensions as the political parties kick off their campaigns. This is worrying because Kogi State's pre-election environment has generally been characterized by inciting and fierce rhetoric, threats of violence and actual incidents of violence. Well, joining us to discuss uh, this evening is Onogu Mohammed. He is the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor of Kogi State. It's so good to have you join us, Mr. Mohammed. Good evening. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here this evening. Great. Let's start by looking at the achievements of your principal. Apparently, um, the, pres the governor has been quoted to brag of his seven-year achievements in Kogi. W would you mind rock walking us through some of those achievements that you think your boss has made in his seven years in office? Thank you very much. And a very good evening to our listeners across the globe. Uh, the, just like you have said, the governor of Kogi State, His Excellency Ayabulo, has been in office since 27th of January 2016. That is about, uh, you know, uh, seven years ago. And uh, during this time, he has been able to turn around the fortunes of the states across all sectors. And uh, before uh, all those achievements were made, a critical analysis of the state were, you know, carried out as regards, you know, the security of the state. Why was the state not prospering the way it's supposed to be or it should be? But then, so analysis were carried out, and we discovered that the security situation of the state as at that time was nothing to write home about, as there were a record of incessant killing, kidnappings across the three senatorial districts of the state. That there was a time in 2015 where over uh, 29 cases of kidnapping were recorded in just one month. So coming into this administration, the governor has been able to uh, settle down quickly by identifying the factors behind these incessant cases of you know, uh, crimes in the state. With the security agency, they were able to identify the perfect solution to it, and uh, that was, you know, carried out. And today, we are having a more peaceful and prosperous Kogi state. How did the governor did the governor tackle the issue of security? First, with the help of the security agency uh, that are working perfectly in synergy in Kogi state, they were able to identify those who are behind this heinous crime. They were able to identify those who are harboring kidnappers. They were able to identify locations, even in the, in the rocks and in the valleys across the state, where kidnappers and other criminals were identified to be residing at that time. And after this process of identification, uh, the government swayed into action, went after the criminals, some of them were arrested, and some that were either resisted arrest were neutralized. Their hideout were destroyed, and even the property that were, was acquired, or that they acquired through the illicit means, were confiscated in the broad light 
to serve as deterrent for others who will be thinking of coming into criminality. Everybody, the government commenced the operation in its own senatorial district, that is Ogi Central Senatorial District, where houses, property belonging to known criminals were marked and destroyed in broad daylight. There were, there were you know, mosques in Kubi Central, as at that time, uh, because of the sex differences, where arms were even piled in the mosque. Those kind of places were identified and they were brought down. Corporates were arrested and they faced the full wrath of the law. By so doing, it took the same measure to Kubi East and to Kubi West. So through that process, we were able to curtail the issue of insecurity in Kubi State. Now, the government of the Excellency of has five thematic areas that were, you know, focused upon to develop the state along that line. One of the areas uh, is in the area of education. Education in the state was nothing to write home about before the absorption of this administration in 2016. In fact, at the time the government was sworn in, all the tertiary institutions in the state were on strike. So the governor took the whole, uh, you know, took the turn by the bull and went, had a very perfect negotiation with the staff and management of all the tertiary institutions in the state. And they were able to put behind the issue of incessant strike in the state. From 2017 till this moment as we speak, no institution Polytechnic universities in Kobe State has gone on strike. Academic activities have been running as it's supposed to be, like a private institution as we have in Kobe State today. Then in the area of primary education, you can check the statistics by the uh, MBS, you will see that we have invested tremendously in the area of primary and secondary education. As at the time we, we, we came to the office in 2016, the performance of our students in both uh, 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 at the WIAC level and uh, even jam activities were very, very poor. But due to investment, not only in providing the infrastructure, learning instructors for the students, but also improving the welfare and the capability of the teachers across primary and secondary school our students in Kobe State today are doing very well in external and both internal examinations across the state. We have been able to provide infrastructure in education. We have renovated somewhere at 25 primary schools and have built over 1,000 temporary primary school blocks across Kobe State as it stands today. And one of those legacies was the, the GYD model uh, primary secondary school that was one of which was commissioned by President Mahmoud Buhari in December 2022. That primary uh, secondary school uh, is a kind of uh, an advanced secondary school where every subject has its own practical uh, laboratory with standard facility, sporting activities, and that is the kind of primary secondary school we are replicating across the senatorial districts in Kogi State today. Then in the area of health, we have also done very well uh, because health, they say, is wealth. And if we don't have a healthy population, it will be difficult to have a meaningful output as far as development is concerned. The government pay attention to mm. educational infrastructure and has provided one of the hospitals we have built recently that was commissioned by President Mahmoud Buhari in December 2022. Uh, is the reference hospital opening where you have the state of the art cutting edge facilities at that hospital that can take care of any kind of ailment? That particular hospital, the standard and the facility inside, uh, is also being replicated in uh, uh, the general hospital in Gilgu. We have the general hospital almost completed in, uh, uh, in Solu in the Agua East local government. We have the same prototype in the Gany in the Jukuta local government. Then we have also expanded the general hospital in Nida to a zonal hospital, where more infrastructures were provided and adequate and cutting edge facilities were also provided. 
Then in Prince Albert Karawudu University, Ayamba, some of the students who were in 3 level before we get, uh, were transferred to other schools because there are no basic health institutions where the medical students can have their practicals. So we were able to refurbish the teaching hospital there where students can now go and you know, have their training uh, free and smoothly. We have built about uh, 18 general hospitals across the state in addition to, you know, uh, primary health care that were provided across the local government of the state. Then to make it easy, the government, the government, the government under the leadership of His Excellency Elijah Adelo, has also introduced Bilo Health Care Plus, where pregnant women and indigent uh, patients can come and access basic health needs free of charge. The pregnant women are entitled to benefit from, you know, delivery kits and all of that basic requirements that they need in the process of uh, giving birth. So the state government has also provided a platform where they can go to access any public hospital uh, free of charge in situations like this. Then we also have, uh, you know, a uh, 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 health care, sorry, holistic health insurance, uh, insurance uh, service that uh, everybody can go and register with a minimal amount of money so that you register yourself, then Three members of your family are also entitled to benefit from that, uh, you know, healthcare scheme. We have okay. also domesticated that everywhere in the state. Then, when you move to the area of infrastructure, this is where the governor has also done exceedingly very well because everybody. Just who because, moves just to before, this we, just family, before we go into infrastructure, just let's just hold on. Um, it's all beautiful that you've been able to tell us that the governor has done great in education, in, uh, you know, health care delivery. But let's just backtrack to 2022 here. Um, the Labour in Kogi State, just before the elections, were uh, on the heels of the governor saying that he's owing salaries. And this is not the first time under his administration that we've had these um, stories of salaries being owed. So you can build a great hospital, you can replicate it across the different local government areas, but if the salaries of these people who work for you are not being paid, can you really say that you've run a successful government? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I told you we have five thematic areas of development in the state. And one of these uh, is a civil service reform. That would have brought me to the issue of salary. We inherited, you know, areas of salaries of civil service in Kogi State when it came on board. And there was over bloated wage bill. So when the government came on board, what it did was to, uh, you know, carry out staff verification exercise. And in the process of doing that, and luckily, and the state government was part of those that benefited from the uh, Paris Fund Refund to help the states that were not able to you know, clear the backlog of salaries of workers to do so. In our own process, after the staff verification where those workers were weeded out, all intended beneficiaries were removed from the payroll of the state government. In uh, April uh, 2018, all the salary areas owed to workers in Kogi State were cleared completely. So you're, so so you're telling me, I'm so sorry, you're telling me that in 2022, uh, March 23, 2022, that the labor unions in your state were happy to lie against your government, claiming that they're still owing salaries uh, from 2018 to 2022. Uh, you're telling me that this was a hoax. You can you can also you can also uh, you know do more findings to. Well, I have I, I, ha I have done my findings, and from what you just told me, in in 2018 yes. you had paid all all the outstanding salaries up to date. I, so I, what I, happened in 2022 yes. that labor unions were accusing your government openly of owing salaries? I'm not sure that the labor unions belong to a political party that would want to make your governor look bad. Except there's something else that you're not telling us. Not at all, not at all. I would want you to be very specific. Just like I said, from 2018, the government gave a standing order that for every 25 to 27th of every month, workers in Kogi State should have their salary paid. That was maintained till this moment as we speak. But I can remember vividly 
that two months ago, because of the shortfall in, uh, you know, uh, allocation and the, the reduction in the revenue generation within the state, we were not able to pay, I think, the month of April after, uh, as, as at when due, that was delayed, but it was later paid, and as we speak today, a time is not owed to any worker in Kogi State. You can also verify it. Maybe you have to, you know, uh, do your finding again. But I can tell you authoritatively that Kogi State civil servant, since the, 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 the clearance, the verification of the staff workers, we have not been, uh, sorry, they have been able to collect or to receive their salary as at when due. Consistently, the government has maintained that up to this moment. But don't forget, don't forget to, uh, you know, uh, not, not to forget the fact that uh, there are some people who claim that they were, you know, maliciously or uh, unlawfully removed from the civil servants, the story they tell people outside, from the civil service, the story they tell people outside. But we are very, you know, sure of the data we put out there that we are not owing any civil servants of our state, the new workers of the state are not owed a dime of their salary. But the issue is that during the verification, a lot of people came up, I am a public servant and I have people who are working in the civil service. But many of them that came up that, oh, they were not cleared, what is your issue? We invited them to come forward with the necessary document so that we can even ask why they were not clear. But they didn't show up on the ground that they knew that they were, you know, they got into the civil service with documents that were false, with documents that were not existing. So people right. in that category, they stay up. I have a cousin, a direct cousin of mine, who was working in the local government area of Kogi State. She was employed in 2004. She was working until 2017. She was receiving salary until 2017. But in 2011, she got married and relocated to Zaria with her husband. So when in 2017 the screening was going on, she called me that she wanted to come and attend the screening. But she heard there were arresting people who have been receiving salary far away from the state. I then asked, were you still working in the local government? She said they have been paying, they have been paying her salary. So if you calculate the period between 2011 to 2017 that she was any salary she was actually not coming to work at all okay and she refused to go for that screening so people in that category they were in, they are in numbers they are in thousands okay so when you ask them today if i give a number to you and ask she will simply tell you that since they don't came on board she has not been paid salary all right. but for people who are working genuinely for the state government they are adequately paid their salary as that went to all right, right from 2018, after the completion of the staff screening exercise. All right, let's move away from that. Let's talk about infrastructure just briefly because I want to, you know, race along with the yes. clock. Thank, um, thank you very much. In the area of infrastructure, I know that uh, even the Cross TV have re uh, received reports of the development that has been taking place in the state. When we came on board, we met uh, a state that you cannot travel within a kilometer without a portal. But we, are, we have been able to construct about 825 kilometers of road across the length and breadth of Kogi State. For example, I come from Kogi East Senatorial District. The longest road this administration has constructed lies in Kogi East. And that is uh, Umomi, Apagiribo, Ngolao, Ajaka, Ida Road. This road cuts across four local government areas. It was abandoned uh, in 2010, and the, the government that succeeded uh, the, uh, the Brian Idris administration was not able to you know, continue with the project because of uh, maybe lack of funds and uh, maybe priority, as, as, as the case may be. But the governor came and took charge of that road. He has completed that road for the people today. Then uh, the second longest road that was constructed by this administration also lies in the eastern flank of the state. And that is Ibana, Opo, Igakeje, Emonyoku, Ogubu Road. That road is 46 kilometers and it has been completed today. There are other roads that were also constructed in that area, in that axis, that is Kogi East Senatorial District. 
Then, when you come to the uh, to Nokoja Metropolis, that is the capital city, uh, it may interest you to know that the first flyover that was constructed in Kogi State was done by this administration. And that project was also commissioned by a former president, Muhammad Buhari, in December 2022. Okay. Then to other senatorial districts like Kogi West, where we have Tad Kabatashi uh, Road, then when you get to uh, Kogi Central, Kogi Township Road, Itape, Inika, Uijemi, uh, Okene Road. So there are several roads that this administration has constructed. And then if you come to Nokoja Metropolis, we have also done a lot of township road, you understand. So in terms of infrastructure, this government has uh, surpassed the achievement of the previous administrations right. by making life more easy for both commuters and even the passerby. People, you know, could be okay. is a center, is, is, is a kind of the most centrally located of all the state of the federation. And due to large volume of you know, uh, 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 travelers, traffic that our road witnesses, as they keep on wearing out, we make efforts to ensure that we fix them okay. as much as we can. So in well, terms of infrastructure, this administration has also done very well. Let's talk, uh, let's uh, talk about security CMT. again, because we're racing against the clock. Let's talk about security. Um, because, of course, um, if we talk about making the lives of the people easy, it also means that people need to be able to go to sleep with their eyes closed. Um, but then there have been several reports of insecurity. I mean, let's go back to 2021. Let's start there and then we'll, you know, you know come forward to 2023. Um, the people of Bunu Kingdom in Kaba, um, Bunu local government area of Kogi State, at that time had expressed displeasure over the insecurity situation, particularly, um, you know, in their farms and social infrastructural deficiency in the area. Now, they also uh, said that aside from that, there is no single police presence or police station in over 40 towns, not four, not five, 40 towns in that village, um, which made the entire Bunu Kingdom amidst security challenges. Um, and, and, and this also obviously calls for concern. Now, a state, your state, is getting ready for the elections, and there have been several rhetorics that have been incisive, uh, there have been remarks that have been um, attributed to your pr principle that different political parties, not just one, have raised an eyebrow against. And, and I'm wondering, how has uh, Yaya Milo's administration helped to quell the security situation? Can you say that you're proud of the yes, security let, situation let in me, your state? Let me, let me quickly respond to uh, the reports from the Kababulu in 2020, as you say. 2021. Uh, you see, the, the, the governor, uh, the government under the leadership of Mr. Salagi Abelo is known for, you know, uh, his, you know, high-heartedness on criminal elements in the states. And the governor, through the traditional rulers, the hunters, and all the stakeholders in the state has made available various avenues to communicate, to report issues of insecurity as it is happening to the nearby security agencies in their locality. We have been doing that consistently. In the same Kababu, the local land you, 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 you talked about, in 2022, about two banks were you know attacked in the solo area of uh, of uh, uh, Okuland, and at that point in time, the governor got the information. He spoke to all the heads of security, mobilizing them, asking them to ensure that none of those criminals will go scot free. And I can tell you, they started the operation training these people within two days. All the fourteen armed men that invaded that the two banks in that area were apprehended while some were neutralized in the process of you know uh, gunfire exchange. So when it comes to insecurity, the government has been very, very top of the situation in the state. For example, this is the state that first of all, uh, first of all states, or if they exist in other states, which I cannot categorically tell you at the moment, that give out what they call you know, a set up what they call whistleblowing uh, 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 exercise. That when you have any information about a criminal that is living in your locality, notify uh, security agency through this means, and your identity will never be disclosed to the public. 
we have been able to enjoy that in the area of COVID insecurity or, you know, quick attempt in arresting insecurity. Okay. And one of the things that is making us to excel so in combating crime in Kofi State. I'm so sorry, so Mr. Mohammed. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to cut in. in. Support to security agency. Yeah, I'm so sorry okay. to cut in, Mr. Mohammed, because we have just a minute. I just want to quickly put out something to you. Um, the issue of the Social Democratic Party um, governorship uh, candidate who has been pointing fingers at the governor. Uh, for the attack that he calls a near-death experience, and also, um, you know, he thinks it was an assassination attempt on his life. Would you care to comment on that as we wrap this conversation up? I, I think uh, it is the issue that is before the law enforcement agency that I will personally don't want to dwell on it, that uh, a governor of a state will descend so low to a wage uh, war against a candidate of a political party that is just three months old in the state. I would not want to, uh, you know. But but uh, we also but we also know that he was a member of the ruling party at some point. He was all, all he was very close and a very good friend of I, you know I, the governor before he decided to move to the SDP. Could it be that there is no love lost between the governor and the SDP candidate? Quickly. Uh, if, when, if, if whether he was a friend to the governor or he was in the former uh, the ruling party before, I don't think uh, I have the locus to 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 make any statement on that. If he was a friend to the governor, then it would be a kind of a private affair, which I don't intervene as a public servant or as an aide to the governor. Uh, then, if he was a member of the uh, the ruling party. I uh, should know why he left the ruling party to where he is today, and he will be the person, a very, uh, you know, uh, uh, the right person to give his, uh, uh, you know, reasons for leaving the ruling party to where he is today. So All I right. don't want to dwell okay. on the issue that has to do with his person and the and the and my principal. So okay. that will be, uh, you know, uh, you know. Uh, it's above your pay grade. Yes, uh, yes, yes, I, I, I know that. This election is for son. Can you hear me? Yes, quickly, quickly. We have to go, sir. Uh, go ahead. Okay. So we are moving towards election by November 2011. Uh, sorry, uh, November 11, 2023. And we have provided a living environment. What okay. the government will not tolerate is that we will not allow a single citizen of the state to be harmed in the name of election. Okay. That if you are campaigning, you should campaign to people, talk to people, Tell them what you want to do for them and let them vote if they want to vote for you. But using election to incite crisis, to foment trouble, to cause disturbance, the government is ready to make sure that people live in peace while we are going into election and even after election. All right. The space is so wide we that everybody who wants to contest, they have registered their, their, their we have to go. every political We have to go, Mr. Mohammed. We have to do their campaign. We have but to go. One thing we don't want to happen is that citizens must be free to go about their lawful business. All right. You understand? Do we have to go. But, but, but I, hope, I hope that whatever the government is churning out to the people and other political parties, they also live by that code and also not incite. Um, you know, the public. So whatever the government exactly. is putting out there, the party that is the ruling party and the government should also abide by it. I want to say thank you. Uh, Onungu Mohammed is the yeah, Chief Press Secretary to the Governor of Kogi State. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure for having me here this evening. All right. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll be discussing the new national leadership of the All Progressive Congress. Stay with us.